Welcome to Vintage Weights PGH. My name is Rob, and the clanging and banging that you might hear and the squeaky noise, whatever that is, is a bunch of barbells in the back of my car because I'm coming home from a weight pickup in Ohio, crossing through West Virginia on the way. Please like, subscribe, comment, and let me know how did you get into Vintage Weights, and let me know What's something that got away? What's a weight pickup you just didn't get? Because those are the two questions that Stonehead Strength on Instagram was nice enough to ask whenever I put it out there before this weight pickup on my Instagram feed and on my YouTube. Hey, what do you guys and gals wanna know? So let's get into how long I've been collecting vintage weights first. I put together a more comprehensive home gym about seven-ish years ago. It's 2023. So yeah, that kind of checks out. I always use like when my children are born to kind of gauge when things happen these days. So when I say more comprehensive, I mean that I had some dumbbells and some stuff that I've moved from like apartment to apartment. But in my home, in the house that my wife and I purchased, I got a Marcy like pro line bench and squat rack and it was on sale at like Dick's Sporting Goods, I think. And then on the used market, I got a 300 pound cap weight set that came with the barbell and cap plates uh, with the white font on them, the old ones that are lathed on the back. I got those on Facebook Marketplace from a gentleman not too far from me. I had to go up in his attic to get them. I wouldn't consider those vintage weights from a collectible standpoint, but they will hold a place in my heart near and dear because of the first Olympic set of plates I ever owned. So then how did I get into vintage weights? Well, after owning those items and having like a, a functional home gym, I started researching better quality equipment and I was on a budget because I was having, my wife and I were having a bunch of babies so on a budget, I found some great articles. Bodybuilding.com forum had, I believe, uh, like a post and a thread about milled Yorks and how you could find them pretty cheap, rusty on the used market and then clean them up. So then those two things shaped my entry into the vintage weights community, if you will. I found and was able to, through some searching, track down some York milled plates. I got three of them. I got three 45s, as well as some Billard deep dish and some USA plates. And I was thrilled about the milled Yorks, didn't know anything about the USA plates, didn't know anything about the Billard deep dish and didn't care. I just wanted those milled Yorks. I sold off the Billard at the time and I sold off the USA plates eventually. Fast forward, if you have been following me on Instagram and if you've subscribed to YouTube, you know that I have since found all those things again, researched them, done whole review videos on them. I'll drop a USA plate review from Pit Barbell, if you don't know what they are, in the description to this one, as well as a link to my Billard review if, you've doesn't, if you don't know much about the Billard deep dish. But back to what I was saying, those York milled plates I took to my backyard and I soaked them in vinegar and I was amazed at how the rust came off. It also took off all of the original paint underneath. I didn't know that at the time. I just thought, oh wow, look how clean these are. It's like bare iron. It was that gray iron. Thankfully, I've kept the pair. I sold the single eventually, but I kept the pair and I still have them. They're my very first vintage weights. And that would have been probably about six years ago. Yeah, around 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. Fast forward, I really used them all the time. Started trying to track down a full set of milled era York. As I tracked them down, just like the first purchase where I ended up with a couple Bill or Deep Dish and a couple USA plates, I would buy these vintage weight lots with other plates involved. And I got curious and started researching. As I got curious about those other weights that came with them, I got curious about other restoration methods that led to oxalic acid. Shout out to Eric Stanick, the 
one of the originators of using oxalic acid for weight plates. Really, really well versed and intelligent guy. Taught me almost everything I know about cleaning up barbells. So I met good people like him online and I got involved in some online vintage weights communities like the Vintage York Barbell Owners Facebook group. Vintage Weightlifting Swap was a great one for finding other weights or selling and trading other weights. The Vintage Weightlifting Swap Facebook group. So check out both of those if you are on Facebook. And that led me to eventually selling off some of that overflow and selling some of it on eBay, which then led me to posting on Instagram. I thought that, hey, maybe if I post some of these old weights on Instagram and say they're for sale on eBay, it'll lead people to my eBay listings. I'm not 100% sure that happened, but that led to just posting everything that I found because I started learning a lot. People that knew way more than me were commenting, like Jeff, Mr. Crinkle on Instagram. One of my earlier posts, I mean, he would correct every mistake I had and he would also just comment with some knowledge and he's still more knowledgeable than me on certain things with vintage weights and he was certainly more knowledgeable than me on everything concerning old weights at first. So I learned a lot. I, you know, whenever someone like that would drop a comment and say, hey, actually, this is what it is, I learned a ton. And there were friendly people on Instagram too that I would message back and forth with and that I still do. And, you know, I met some of them at Home Gym Con. So that was a great time meeting them in person. So that was my history of getting involved with vintage weights. To answer your second question, so Stonehead Strength asked, what's one that got away? Well, as I mentioned, I'd sold off some of the non-milled York plates that I ended up with, and I kicked myself a little bit, regretted that a little bit. So in terms of one that got away from that angle, yeah, you can name some of those, like the Deep Dish Billards or some of the USA plates at first that I sold off. But in terms of a listing that escaped me that like, oh, I was going for this thing and then, ah, I didn't get it. Like, no. Recently, there hasn't been too much. I mean, there was a, like I mentioned in one of my other videos, there was a humongous listing recently that I tried to uh, save up some money for, but it went sky high and I just didn't even think it was worth it at that point. But something that I look back on and I think, oh, geez, I wish I would have got those. Like, that was worth it. Like, oh, man. About a year and a half ago, there was a Craigslist listing that had some York dumbbells and some Jackson weight plates. And they were standard Jackson weight plates, but they weren't the standard line. They were the number five set, so they were the... So they were the larger than one inch but not quite two inch plates like the inch and a half off the top of my head i don't remember the exact measurement and i think he definitely had 25s if i remember right maybe he had 35s and i think he had 10s and i really i still want to get jackson weights i love andy jackson's history i love the history of the jackson barbell but at, at the time he wanted, I think he wanted $4 a pound. And then as I kind of talked with him about some of the York dumbbells he had, along with the Jackson weights, he lowered it to maybe $3 a pound, if I remember correctly. But even that, I was doing the math in my head and thinking, oh man, $150 for a pair of 25 pound plates that I don't even have the bar that will fit them. And even if I buy them, all or if i buy them all I, I have 25s 35s and maybe 10s i forget exactly what he had but he didn't have the largest plates and he didn't, i thought that just felt weird to me to have like the middle of a set not have the largest not have the smallest just have the middle plates at the time that felt weird now i have all kinds of 25s and 35s it shows how much he changed in like a year and a half so i passed on them Fast forward 
about a month ago, I picked up 50 pound Jackson plates from that set, not that gentleman set, but that are part of the number five set with the larger center hole. And now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I could have had those other plates that would go with these for $3 a pound, which is still expensive compared to some other things. But if you're in the vintage weights community, that's really not that bad of a price for those plates. But, you know, I can't predict the future. I didn't know I would find the 50 pounders. I didn't know that a year from then I'd be so obsessed with Jackson's that I don't care. I'd, I'd love to have 35, 25s, 10s. I'd love to have 10 ounces. I'd love to have anything that has, you know, Andy Jackson's history behind it. So, hey, hindsight's 2020. What are you going to do? I'm sure they'll come around again. I'm sure I'll have an opportunity again to trade for them, something like that. But that would be the one that comes to mind that the listing got away. Because when I went, <coughs> excuse me, when I went to meet the gentleman to pick up the roundheads, I inquired again about the Jackson plates because I was still kind of thinking about them. And he said, oh, they're all gone. So the decision was made for me. Someone else got them. What have you missed out on? What did you narrowly miss or make a bad decision on that you wish you would have bought? Or what did you narrowly miss that you just didn't get there on time or you messaged them and it was already sold, already pending, you were left on red, you didn't even get a response? Drop a comment, tell me your story. Because like I said in my other video, this is a vintage weights community. I wanna hear about you. And like I said earlier in this video, I learn from all of you. That's the main reason I'm doing all of these things is that I love to learn and I love to learn more about old weights because old weights, new gains. Thanks for watching.